What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today, as you can probably tell, we're doing the long-awaited hand grinder video. So today, I'm gonna to be doing two main, two main things, essentially, that'll make it easy to follow. And I wanna reiterate that there are time cues below. So yes, you see the timestamp and it's insane. It's because I'm not trying to get views on 10 different videos that make it difficult for you to compare the grinders. I want you to have it all in one spot. You don't have to go through all these different videos to find comparisons. I wanted to put it all in one. So we have 10 grinders here. We have multiple time cues. And what I'm gonna to do today is first, I'm going to look at kind of the build, the, the, the tick system, how you're dialing it in, and just kind of the feel of every grinder. Then I'm gonna take them apart and we're gonna look at the burr sets in each. We're gonna just, you know, kind of talk about the flavor profiles from my nine months of extensive exhaustive testing, loads of double blinds, etc. So sit down, brew a cup of coffee. If you're gonna watch this on a Friday night, grab some popcorn maybe, because we're about to get in for a ride. Uh, but again, you don't have to do that. You can do little 10 minute sections here and there. Regardless, thank you for even getting this far in the video. You are seriously awesome. You make my life better. Thank you so much. Let's do this. Now this video has literally been about nine months in the making. Back in maybe September or so of 2021, I started to accumulate hand grinders in order to create a massive hand grinder video. Now, of course, because how many hand grinders are on the market and the fact that so many keep coming out, it seems every other week, it took me a long time to kind of get to a point where I was like, all right, I'm satisfied. I'm just gonna make a video. I can't keep waiting for more and more hand grinders to come out. Now I do want to point out that an obvious um, missing grinder here is the Mazer Omega, which I do have, um, but I'm gonna make a video dedicated to that. And I will just reference this video in that video. I just felt because that's such a new grinder and there's not really videos out that I'll dedicate a whole video to it instead of adding it in this lineup. Um, but anyway, so you might see some grinders that you're familiar with. You may see some that you're not. You may see some, uh, some missing that you're like, well, why don't you have that? For instance, I'm sure people ask why I don't have like the Easy Presso J Max. Um, well, the reason is because again, if I, you know, load it up on the Easy Presso grinders, we'd have a lot more than 10. So I try to just limit it to one per manufacturer so that we could have a good gist. I kind of chose the ones I thought were maybe the best from each manufacturer anyway. I'm going to quickly talk about uh, how I acquired these because I need to give credit where credit's due. First of all, the ones that I purchased, thank you to my Patreon, and uh, even the ones I don't purchase, uh, they're all going to go to someone uh, in my Patreon, well, different people, I guess, um, with the exception of one, which is one that I am uh, going to hold on to, and it, we'll see which one that is at the end of the video. But anyway, I wanted to thank you, Patreon, for that, um, and then let's go through about how I acquired each one. This is the Orphan Espresso Lido OG. I bought this um, at the Boston Expo from Orphan Espresso from Doug and Barb, and I got it at their wholesale pricing. Thank you for that. This one is not my grinder. This is a one plug dual conical burr grinder that uh, was purchased from Alibaba, um, and it is owned by Kim Hawk, uh, sent to me by way of Brian Kwan. And Brian has a whole video on this uh, hand grinder, and I'll post that below. Uh, the Commandante C40 I actually purchased. Um, I purchased my C40 with uh, Patreon funds back in May or June of last year. Uh, the Etz I was sent to me graciously by Gary Horn. Br Gr Gary Horn Grind and Brewing Solutions. Thank you, Josh, for that, and for uh, and 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 uh, Gary. The Easy Presso K Plus was sent to me by Easy Presso because my friend Ply up at Rogue Wave um, essentially pestered them to send me one. The King Grinder K Six I purchased from AliExpress um, with Patreon funds. The Kinu I actually won at the host in Milan last year at the Kino slash Smart Espresso Profiler booth. Um, I had traced a pressure profile using the Smart Espresso Profiler. Um, it was a competition essentially who could trace a pressure profile as exactly as was put on the board. I won that competition, so I got this simplicity for free. The Time War Chestnut X was sent to me by my friend Anita Tam at Slow Pour Supply. The Option O Remy, I purchased at a discount from Option O themselves. Thank you, Hayden, for that discount. And then Normcore, I got this sent to me by Normcore, um, so thank you for that. Okay, so that covers that basis. We're good to go legally. All right, let's continue on. So 
we're gonna start at this end and just move through it. It's not in any particular order. I'm just gonna like start. And what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna look at the build quality. We're gonna take a look at um, kind of some of the quirks of each ones as well as the pros of each ones and just, you know, essentially how they're built. Uh, and then we're gonna move into what the burrs look like. So I'll disassemble them and show you what that looks like. And then we'll finish by discussing flavor profile doing some comparisons of the ones I think are the best, and then we'll end with what my favorite is. So buckle in, we've got time cues below so that you can skip around to whichever grinder you wanna see. Um, yeah, so let's get going. All right, so first up, we have the Norm Core. Now this one is the cheapest one on the table. It comes in around 89 to 99 US dollars. Now mind you, when I give you prices, these are all based in what I was able to find um, on Google last night um, in the US. So this might be a different price where you're at in the world. I'm going based off of the pricing that I am most familiar with. Anyway, so this is the Norm Core. Now let's take a look at it. It looks pretty sleek. It's very minimal. It's a fully aluminum alloy uh, cut out of a single piece for the body essentially. Um, and then we have just kind of a standard handle. Now, right off the bat, there are some big quirks that I really cannot stand. First is this top comes off so easily. There's yet to be a time I'm grinding where I don't pull it off on accident. I'll be sitting there grinding in and it just, oh crud. Got to put it back on. Uh, oh no! So it comes off really easily. There's no what what should what sh there should be is maybe some sort of um, I don't know some sort of clicking like there's some of these that have like a, a nice click whenever you push it down. There's no magnets or anything to kind of hold it in place. It's just barely holding on. So that's that's something I'm not a very big fan of. Um, on top of that, this knob right here is very tight. So as you're twisting it, it doesn't really want to turn. It's not loose. It doesn't have that nice. It doesn't have that nice like. You know what I'm saying? You want it to kind of spin, so it's it just has a nicer feel whenever you're able to spin it. I'm sure I'm sure if I were to grind, you know, 20, 30 pounds through this, I would really be able to have some good motion. But at, at this time, it's it's just really it's really tight. Um, and I did, by the way, before I continue, I want you to know I did. Uh, I mean, I had these for nine or some of them for nine months, some for eight, for, some for seven. Uh, the the most recent one I got was this one uh, from Brian, but it was seasoned by him. So he had he had put a lot of coffee through this. Um, I talked to him about it. So I feel pretty good about uh, my knowledge on that, but everything else I've had for quite a long time. I've had the option of Remy for might be five or six months, this from eight or nine months, this for uh, seven months, this for like five months. I can't remember, all of them I've had for multiple months essentially. Anyway, so then we, we're gonna take this, the catch cup. It's really nicely threaded, it comes out and goes back on really nicely. It's it, Whenever you tighten it on, it's not really going anywhere. It it, it's, it feels really nice. It actually feels pretty premium for the price. Um, then we're gonna look at the click system below. It has that 0.5 millimeter thread pitch and it has 12 uh, or 24 uh, clicks essentially. So when you look at the bottom, you have, actually let's do like this. So going this way is for coarser. Going this way is for finer. Now there is no number system, so you do have to count your clicks. They've got big circles and then dashes to kind of give you reference. So going this way is again fine, and they ha have fine and coarse right there. So you have uh, that 0.5 millimeter thread pitch, and you're able to um, do 24 clicks per revolution. So you're able to get decent, uh, decent dialing in. It's not gonna be the best for espresso, but it does an okay job. Um, Anyway, and again, we'll talk about flavor uh, profile later. It does have this nice little like, um, I guess that, I don't really know what that is actually. I guess it's like a rubber, it's either rubber or silicon, but um, that's so that when you're gripping it, it doesn't come off. I would recommend actually pushing it up more. If you're holding it down here and you're twisting it, you could loosen this and as you keep, as you keep grinding, this could just slowly spin off. That never actually happened because there's quite a few threads, but just something to uh, take into account. All right, let's put that back on. Finally, whenever you're grinding, it takes like 45 or so seconds to do, you know, like a 15 or so dose on filter. It takes over a minute, maybe a minute and a half for espresso. Um, and, it, you know, it, it feels okay, I guess, doing it. But again, you have to worry about this popping off and then and the knob is kind of a nuisance. And then it's got 38 millimeter burrs, which we will take a look at later. So here, this is the option O, Remy. Um, it's priced at about 228 US dollars that I could find. Of course, it, it, that might be different around the world. I'm not sure, but... Um, it's a really nice premium feeling grinder. You'll probably recognize this. If you look at James Hoffman's Ultimate Grinder Showdown from three years ago, this looks pretty much identical to the Helor 101 that he uh, did. And it's because they essentially took it and redid it, right? So it's almost identical to that. Um, and if you look at it, it's almost identical to what Normcore made after. 
uh, which we'll look more at that comparison later. But essentially you have this uh, little knob right here, which uh, feels okay. It's kind of like rough. I wish it was finished a little bit better. I don't super love the feeling. It feels like if I had coffee grime or something on my hands, it would stain pretty easily. But you know, it hasn't really yet. It's, it's, it's okay. Um, this, this top, fits much more much better on it it's uh it's a lot it's a lot tighter this one doesn't really pop off the way that that one does and it's made of uh it's made of a much more sturdy material um yeah so i this one this one's a little bit better i wish it did have a little bit more maybe maybe if there was like magnets maybe there is magnets but it doesn't really click as well it's yeah, I, I wish there were like a strong, there were like stronger magnets or something there. That's one of my pet peeves is when I'm grinding and the top pulls off. It really frustrates me. Um, this too has a 0.5 millimeter thread pitch. The, the catch cup is actually magnetic, um, which is great. I love magnetic catch cups. And then the base here, you actually have a stepless adjustment system, which is wonderful. So that, that's very rare actually on hand grinders to have a stepless system. So it has 0.5 thread pitch, but you are able to stepless and seamlessly go through. So you have revolutions and you have num a number system from zero over to nine. So you're able to seamlessly dial in espresso or uh, pour over. Now they have different burr sets. I have the TIN coded um, burrs that are more so aimed towards Turkish espresso type coffees. They also have, and this is a hexagonal, which we'll take a look at later, 38 millimeter. We'll take, uh, but they also have a, a five spoke, a pentagonal uh, burr that they say is best for filter coffee and that it produces few fines. I'm, I'm skeptical of that because the geometry is similar to uh, like the stock Breville um, pentagonal burrs and those produce a ton of fines and it's not really suitable for filter. I, I don't have it though, so I can't really speak on it. I specifically chose this because it looked like it would do a better job. But again, we'll talk about taste here in a little bit. Um, it has this nice little rubber rubber sleeve around it, which helps with uh, the friction there. Again, I would recommend pushing it to the top. And because you, you wanna, this one, honestly, the body's so small that with my massive Shrek hands, it, I can I can kind of push this cup off as I'm grinding, which is not ideal. So I, while I do love magnetic catch cups, it's not ideal because as I'm grinding, if I'm squeezing too hard or something, it, it has detached for, for me. So although it has a premium feel, it's all cut out of like a nice metal, it can kind of pop off like that. So yeah. Next up, we have the Time More Chestnut X. Now this one has actually one of my favorite like feels and bodies to it. It's actually squared off. And the reason I think they did that is because whenever you are turning, when it's, when it's round and you don't have anything rubber or any, any stopper, it can kind of spin in your hand and be difficult to grip. This is much easier because it's kind of squared off, um, which I think is a unique decision. None of these other ones are squared off. They're all circular, which makes sense. But this one, they took a different approach, which I, I can appreciate. Um, and right off the bat, you see some differences um, that are really unique to this, like the handle. One of my, uh, another big pet peeve of mine with, with hand grinders is the handles are so massive and they just kind of sit there. You don't want to always have to take them off because it's just, it's kind of, it's kind of annoying, especially with ones where you have to unscrew the top in order to take the handle off, uh, like the Kinu and like this one. Um, but this one, they, they, they have a patented uh, little, a little, I don't know what you wouldn't even want to call it, but a little spring device here that allows you to pull down and go to the side and has a little rubber stopper on it so it doesn't hurt the grinder and on top of that if you wanted to you could use this as like a kind of like a knocker to knock the grounds off of that have built up from static uh, you don't have to do that because most of what's built up is chaff and some fines so you may want to keep that there and, and remove it or if you want zero retention you could just bang it like so. Anyway, this, this has a really nice premium feel to it. The top does have a strong magnet on it. So when it goes down, you gotta line up the, oh, my lanta, there we go. So when you have it there, boom. Let's see how much force, I, there it goes. So it holds on pretty dang well, which I appreciate. Um, this retails at 328 US dollars. Of course, again, that could be different everywhere else. Um, and then the catch cup here is, I really, really like. So the catch cup, it takes, it has little metal. I mean, it has little magnets at the bottom so you can hear a click, listen to this. That's the, met, the magnets coming together. So it does have magnets to hold it in place, but when you turn it, you only have to go 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and it comes out and you can see the four little magnets there on the top. So it takes, it's one twist of the hand. And there's no real fear of it coming off. Whoops. 
there we go. There it is. There's no real fear of it coming off because it has that double system. It's got threads and magnets. And when you're holding it, I've never had an issue because there's no, there's no spinning of the hand grinder because of that kind of angled off areas. Then this one has a unique system down here, which they've also patented. They have macro and micro steps. The, ma mi the macro steps go at 83 microns and the macro, uh, blah, blah, blah. the macro go at 83 microns and the micro go at 16 microns. So you have both of these options here. The macro is this big one, right? So you have this big, this big uh, um, twisty turny thingy uh, that we're going to be turning for those 83 micron clicks. And then you have this little knob underneath which goes for micro, which those are the 16 microns. So you're able to dial in with, with pretty solid precision. Um, but yeah, we'll look at, again, we'll look at the rest of it later. Uh, it's aluminum alloy CNC. Uh, again, it feels premium. It looks really nice. I enjoy the aesthetic of it. And it's just unique. I, you, you don't really see square hand grinders. Next up, we have the Kinu. This one's the Simplicity. Now, Kinu is known for having like three separate grinders. They have, oh, well, they have more than that, but of this style, the M47, they've got the Classic, the Simplicity, and the Phoenix, kind of in that order from most expensive to cheapest. Um, this one's the middle tier. Uh, the differences between them uh, can include like the catch cup and can include some small changes, but they all have the same burst set inside. Um, some, there are some differences with bearings and whatnot, but this one is, uh, has been around for a long, long time. They've made millions of hand grinders in the time that they've been um, a company. Retails for around 315 US dollars. Um, this one just feels solid. It is quite heavy, feels really good. What's, what's unique about it is because there is no like rubber thing to hold on to, like here we have that silicone, here we have these little uh, rubber bands. This one has nothing except this little piece that looks kind of like a nose. If you look at it from a profile side, it looks like a little nose and there's like a, a prominent brow. Well, that is for your thumb to push against so that when you're grinding, you have something to hold it in place, which is actually kind of nice. And it forces you to keep your hand away from down here. Because if you were holding it lower, like I tend to do because I have big hands, I could just pop this little bad boy kind of off, make it a little loose. This is like a plasticky silicone type of... Um, uh, catch cup so it just kind of slides into place they do have magnetic catch cups that you can buy for like an extra 40 or 50 dollars uh, but i don't really see a point in that because this does the job it just doesn't feel as premium but it, that doesn't super bother me um, but yeah so this one has a really nice feel to it and then when i hold it even with my massive hands it forces you to hold up here you're away from the catch cup good to go now what's really great about this is it is also stepless but you have even more control than the, the Remy in the sense that every tick mark on here represents 10 microns, but you can essentially go down to five, four micron differences if you're going in between those ticks, right? So in order to change, you just unscrew this top part, which that is what's nice about that is it holds your, your, your setting into place so you can truly go to those mid, middle tier, middle tick marks. And then you just turn the dial here so there are multiple revolutions in, um, um, in order to dial in exactly how you want with those uh, fine micron adjustments. Now what's great about this grinder is it's actually very fast in grinding. It takes like less than half a minute to grind for filter and just over a minute for espresso, which is, really isn't that bad. Um, but yeah, it has this nice lip up the top so that when you're dumping the beans in, you don't really have to deal with uh, any, any beans kind of hopping out or anything. So it has a lip to kind of feed that in, which I really like. And it's built substantially strong. And on top of all of that, they arguably have the best alignment system at a factory. They have a dual, bur bur system, uh, dual, dual bearing system in here, uh, which is something that is common through a few of these grinders, which helps to maintain alignment as well. But uh, this is, you know, it's a grinder that many many use and it was my friend Matt Winton who or I call him Matt Winton uh, won the World Brewers Cup Championship using a Kinu M47 uh, and again we'll talk about flavor profiles we look at the burst set. Next up we have the King Grinder K6. Now there are a few iterations of this but this one I, I think is the best of their um, of, of the ones that they have. It has actually essentially the same burst set as the K plus um, and is like the Lego Mini um, but the, one of the differences is is the collar is just a little bit different size uh, at which might be a reason why, well, well I, I won't spoil the ahead. Um, anyway, one thing I really, really love about this is the click system. So what you have is right here, you have a vertical line from one to four. So you have one, two, three, four right here. 
And then as you're clicking, you can say, okay, I'm past one, so I'm one and uh, one and 40. And as you keep going, oh, I'm going coarser, silly. As you keep getting finer, you can say, okay, I'm now at, let's get past two, we're at two and 10. Then as we keep going, you're at three and 20. You're at four and whatever. So you have the capability to really be able to follow what you're doing. Usually with these revolutions, it's kind of hard to remember where you're at. I'm at three turns and eight ticks. That's kind of difficult to remember unless you have something like this. So I really appreciate this, uh, this system of, of clicks. It's really nice, really easy to understand where you're at because you know objectively it says it right there. Um, this one feels... You know, it, it feels okay. It, 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 the top plastic bit, I, I don't like. The, the handle on this comes off all the time. It does not hold on very well at all. I don't like that. Um, this top little piece is kind of neat because it stays on with a little gasket. So it, it stays on really nicely. So at the end of it, you know, it, the only thing that kind of comes off is the handle. Uh, so you're not really, you're not going to be doing this. And then if you're, if you have a high torque, you're not going to spill beans out or anything. So I kind of enjoy that. The, the basket is similar to that on the norm core. So it just has that, that metal thread pitch or that metal threads. Every adjustment is 16 microns. So every click 16 microns. So that's, that's more than good enough uh, in order to dial an espresso. Uh, for instance, on the Commandante here soon, it, it comes set at 30, but you can get red clicks go down to 15. So 16 is more than adequate to, um, to get that espresso. Now we also have this silicon band on here. That's to be able to hold and without losing grip. So it kind of has a nice feel to it. Um, but yeah, for uh, at $150 retail, getting this from AliExpress, you know, it's, it, it does the job. Uh, again, we'll go over flavor here in a bit. One more thing to note about the King Grinder actually is that they made it like this so that you don't have to use the handle. So that top that stays on there is so that you can put a screwdriver or a, a, a cordless screwdriver and use that for your, uh, for your spinning. So I actually take the top off because I don't use a, a drill bit. I just go straight onto this because I'm a rebel. And then you take that and I'm just gonna tighten it on. There we are. So now we have it on. Actually, let me take this off so you can see the bottom. You can see the burr spinning. So you want a lower RPM uh, hand, uh, hand tool. This one can go low if I want it to, so that's what we'll do. But yeah. So you can grind it with a power drill just like that. Now, of course, you could do this with other grinders, but they actually recommend that you do it. And they, they have said, uh, the company has said that they have done it for over a year without any issues. So I, I have done it, I did it while seasoning just to see how it handled. And it felt kind of odd to me because I felt like if I was off at all, that I would kind of mess up the auger. But you know, you do you. If you want to do that, it is a cheaper grinder, uh, relatively speaking. So if that's something that is intriguing to you for espresso, go for it. If you're doing it for filter, obviously going at a higher RPM can produce more fines. Um, but yeah, this, you know, it doesn't take that long to grind with those bigger burrs. It takes like 35 seconds for filtering, like a minute, minute, 20, minute, 30 for espresso. Next up, we have the Easy Presso K Plus. Now this one has another one of those external adjustment systems, which I really, really like. This one has it on the top with these big numbers. And then there are multiple clicks, 90 clicks per round. So that's pretty good. 22 microns per, per click, which I think is sufficient to make solid espresso. You know, it might be, it might be better to have it down to 15 or so, but 22 does a good job. Um, this one, the K Plus has a magnetic catch cup. So this and the K Pro both do. Uh, the K Max, uh, so there are three in the K series. They all have like the same internals. The biggest differences come with the catch cup. So the K Max has like, um, doesn't have a magnetic catch cup and it's made of a different material. Uh, the K Pro has magnetic, but it does not have the removable base here. And then the K Plus has this removable base so that you can put it straight into a porta filter. Now, I don't really, use, I don't ever really use that. I don't, I don't know. You can make, use it as a blind shaker, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, but the feel of this is absolutely fantastic. I think it looks really nice. It has kind of this textured area in the center so that you have grip. And then it also has this divot and I, it just, your hand naturally goes there. So you don't really have to worry about knocking this uh, magnet off. This one actually feels more substantial than the, uh, than the option O one does. It has a much more substantial pull on the magnets. And as you can see, there are just a ton of magnets lined up there um, as well as here. So when you put it on, it just clicks on really nicely. 
It's really robust. So this one has a nice feel to it. It has a long, it has a decently long arm, which makes it easier to grind. And because of the burst set, that 48 millimeter burst set, you have a, it's just an easier time. It doesn't take very long to, uh, to grind for filter or espresso. It's similar to the King Grinder K6 because they have the same burst set roughly. Um, but yeah, so this one, I enjoy the click system. It does a great job with both filter and espresso. This one retails at about 300 US dollars. Easy Presso has been absolutely killing it with their hand grinder lineup. Their J-Series, their K-Series, their Q2. Uh, the Q2 Heptagonal, which I've not been able to get my hands on, supposedly has the same exact burst set as the Commandante. Granted, so many, so many hand grinders do now because it's kind of set a standard. Um, even this one, the, the, the bird geometry is pretty much identical. Uh, same with this, uh, probably with something else I can't remember. We'll pull these out here in a second. But they do, it, it's such an incredible, it, it, they, they set such an incredible, incredibly high precedent that you know, others are just kind of using that similar geometry. But the Easy Presso is, is probably the, the, the most, I guess, um, forward thinking and forward pushing kind of uh, gr hand grinding company right now just with the amount the sheer amount of products they put out that are all of extremely high quality that are kind of um, spanning a wide a wide uh, um, wide group of people and interests all right next up is one that i was super super excited about its launch it's the etzinger etz i so not etz one etz i so this one um I mean, shoot, what I, re what I really enjoy about this is the handle. One of the first things that you see is the handle is housed inside of the body. There is a few magnets right here so that when you pull it out and lay it down, it stays there pretty well. It's not like super intense magnets, but just enough that it feels, it feels good. You know it's not really going to go anywhere. So that just kind of comes in and out. The top, you just kind of push down and it lifts off. And that is also held in. There's two pieces of metal here, two magnets there. Now, the most unique thing about this grinder is the fact that it is a hollow chamber. There is no axle in there. There's no auger. There's no, uh, I said auger. There's no axle in there. It's hollow. And it's because the body, if you can see inside of it, the body spins around the burr. See that? Whoosh. Well, whoosh. So the cone burr stays stationary. Now, an issue with this is actually that uh, because of that, it has weirdly high retention. You get around a gram or so whenever you're doing espresso, which is very odd. Um, you kind of need to get a brush and, and make sure you get stuff out. But it, you know, it, it, I guess that's some of the pains of, of, of innovation, right? So this is the first time in a hand grinder that you have this idea of the body, which is right inside, spinning around the, the cone, which is kind of neat. Uh, now this top does feel kind of cheapy. It, um, you know, I don't mind plastic. Uh, this is like a nice plastic, but this, I don't know, this kind of like click thing, it feels kind of weird. I wish there was something, you know, something a little bit better than that. And I also don't mind this handle. I kind of like that it's flat. It feels kind of nice when you're holding it. They have little grooves in there that kind of fit your fingers really nicely. So it feels, you know, it feels good to grind with. Um, Let's go ahead and take a look down here because this is a really, a really cool thing. So the, the catch cup is magnetic, but uniquely it's not magnets lined on the rim it is a magnet right in the center that aligns with this right here. So when you go in, it, pull, it has like a strong middle magnet. It's actually very strong. So like, it's a, very, it's, it's a stronger connection than any of the other ones, honestly. They have a really strong magnet there, you just pull straight down. And then what's super incredible about this is all you do to get the burr out is you simply go as coarse as possible. And then they have this little section that says, do not grind. You line up the line with the arrow and boom you have this out. Now we'll look at the burr here in a second, but I just think that's really, really unique and innovative and I love that you can access the burr so easily. Now putting it back in can be a little annoying because you have to line up, there we go. There we go. It's not that hard. You just gotta like line up the little, the little notches in there. But you have 23 main numbers and they have little ticks in between. So the settings on here is based off of the vernier scale. You have one through 23 and there's 88 steps altogether and they have a 0 0.02 millimeter thread pitch. So you have a lot of options here to really dial in what you're wanting to get. So whether it's espresso Turkish down here, whether it's French press cold brew up here, just be sure right at the end, it's very easy to get into this area. If you grind in this area, it will just pop out. So you wanna make sure, like if you're grinding at 23, be sure you're stuck on 23. Otherwise, it can kind of do the thing that the Brazza Sete does. If it's loose at all, it can kind of just fall out while grinding. But yeah, so this retails at around 285 US dollars. Um, yeah, so that's the Etzinger, Etz-I.
A next grinder needs no introduction, uh, but we're gonna do it anyway. This is the Comandante C40. Now I do have the MK. So actually when I said earlier I bought this, I bought the MK3. Um, and then when the MK4 came out, I was sent this one for free. And so I gave my MK3 to a Patreon supporter. So that's kind of how that worked. Um, so I did pay for one anyway. Um, so the MK4, it just has a few differences. One is they have these, uh, these, these, um, what am I, my goodness, what is it? stabilizers up top that dip down so you don't get beans caught in the little circle that is in the MK3. On top of that, they have essentially an indestructible polymer uh, uh, catch cup, so it's not glass anymore. You can just like, you can just, you know, play hacky sack with it. I'm obviously not very good at hacky sack, but you know, you can, basketball is my favorite sport. I like the way they dribble up and down the court. I keep it so fresh on the microphone. I like no interruption when the game is on. So you have, you have that. Um, yeah, so this one has 30 microns per click, unless you want to upgrade for like 40, 50 or so dollars to the red click system, in which case that it halves it. With red clicks, every click is 15 micron of uh, adjustment. So you have to make some changes with it. Um, and it's a little expensive to do that. Already this retails anywhere from 320 to 360 US dollars, depending on if a company has them in stock, they're frequently out of stock, but it makes sense. This kind of paved the way for really high, um, high quality hand grinders with a, with a robust price tag on it. And again, they came up with that nitro blade. So it's this nitrogen steel that is incredibly, uh, incredibly hard and is going to last for a really long time with deep, really well cut grooves in it. Um, and again, they kind of, you know, they pushed that bird geometry that now has taken over most hand grinders. Now, this is one of the biggest complaints, which most people complain about is this little plastic bit here. I do not like it. And it also, it always like is unlevel which just like makes me think that I'm tilting the axle, which I'm not, but it just, I don't know, it looks, it looks kind of, doesn't really look great and get finger smudges on it. And yeah, you have such a nice body with this beautiful wood. And then you have this little, I don't know. I am glad that they changed from glass though. I never really felt super comfortable using the glass, even though they didn't break super easy. They could break and that just, I don't know. But this one, you know, easy peasy. So I like that. Um, Anyway, we'll go ahead and move on because this one, uh, yeah, we'll talk about it during the deconstruction bit, but you know, we know, we know the, the Comandante. Now this next one is a unique one. Um, and I want, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. So this one, uh, is, is pur purchasable on Alibaba and I'll, I have links for everything below. Um, there are some unique things about it. One of them is there is a grinder coming out called the Momentum Grinder by I Am Not A Barista. And they, uh, this is just from what I've read and what I've heard, but supposedly this was originally their design that they were not super pleased with and it ended up being sold anyway without, uh, you know, without their permission on it. I, I, this is, this is all, this is of course speculation. I can't, or allegedly, I can't say that for certain, but, um, so that 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 would explain some of the shortfallings of this. It's it, it, it's kind of there's some there's some weird things about it. First of all, uh, you ro rotate it in the opposite direction. Uh, so I did not know that when I first got it, and I was going clockwise because that is just naturally a much easier way for your body to work it. Going counterclockwise is not as easy muscularly when you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, counterclockwise is great. That's how your body works. Uh, but right-handed counterclockwise doesn't. It's not intuitive, and you're in the muscularly it doesn't work the same way. So you're having to try a little bit harder, and it's just not as advantageous. So I started grinding, and nothing was happening. I was like, oh my goodness, what's going on? Until I went reverse. So you have that, that's kind of weird. The catch cup is very obnoxious, in my opinion. You have this massive lip on it. And so whenever you're dumping grounds out, they get caught behind that lip and it's super annoying. Um, on top of that, and very interestingly, they have in the base here, a 500 micron sifter. So let me unscrew it. Whoops, there's some grounds in it. Whoopsie daisy. So obviously you can remove it, but it's a really unique decision to have a 500 micron little sieve in there. Um, I mean, I, I, I grind filter sometimes at 500 microns, so that would kind of lose everything. Um, go ahead and tap that out. So you can obviously take that out. It just sits right there and has a little cavity beneath it to catch those fines. Um, but I, I think a 200, I think 200 would have sufficed quite well. In fact, I think that would have been a great, a great idea. A cool little, um, cool little part. But anyway, so that screws on. There's actually quite a bit of uh, threads there. So it, it stays on really, really well. Uh, and then this is magnetic and has a really strong magnet to it. Uh, 
Yeah, it's pretty strong. It's not as strong as the K+, Plus. definitely not as strong as the Etsy, but it's stronger, I think, than the Remy, probably, or maybe the same strength. Now, I do not like the adjustment dial. You essentially have uh, four numbers on there, 12, 9, 6, and 3, like a, uh, like a, a backwards clock, essentially. So it goes 12 up here, six, uh, 9, 6, 3, as opposed to 12, 3, 6, 9. Anyway, um, and so with each turn, the, it's difficult because the information is confusing that I found online. It said on one of them, there's a 0 0.029 millimeter uh, difference per grid change. And then right after that on the information, it said there's a 0.5 millimeter distance per each one. So one of them I'm sure is talking about, I'm not quite sure actually, it, it said per grid on both of them. So it said 0 0.029 and then it said 0.5. So I'm assuming you have a 0.5 thread pitch and then you have 0.029 micron change, or not micron change, but uh, um, 29 microns uh, is what I would assume is is per per click maybe. Um, so about so similar to the Commandante. I'm not quite sure on that. It was a little confusing on the website because it also used the word grid, which I wasn't really positive on. But anyway, uh, it has this really thick like gooey, goopy kind of handle here, which I just can imagine over time as it rubs off, it'll get sticky. Um, it, it, feel, it just feels like one of that. And there's this overt line here where it kind of comes together. I just feel like that's going to disintegrate with, you know, daily use. Uh, but what is really great about it, it does have this screw in system, just like the Kinu. So you take this off, but the feeding is great. Other than the fact that the, the spacing is quite narrow. So if you use Pacamaro, Margo Hipe, or some other large variety, it's gonna be hard to get it through those little, those little um, um, slit, slots. Now, I haven't used those coffees yet with this grinder, but even some normal like Katora or Katwai or things like that have gotten stuck that I've had to kind of just push through. So when you dump it in, it doesn't fall, it doesn't free fall in like the Kinu where it's just a full, full out hollow cavity. This one has those little slits there that make it kind of difficult. But anyway, we're gonna pull this out. And then what you have inside, and we'll deconstruct this later, but what you have inside is you have a burr set here that's 38 mils and a burr set here that's 48 millimeters. So you have two conical burrs inside. You have a pre-breaker, that's a very simplistic design uh, burr, and then you have the final cutter. So anyway, that is, uh, this thing retails at around 299 if you buy one. Now again, because it is on Ollie, um, Alibaba. If you buy in bulk, it's cheaper. So if you and a few friends get together, it can go all the way down to $180, uh, I believe. But anyway, let me put this back together real quick. It goes through this lid. So the handle is very, very securely on there. You're never going to have an issue of the handle coming off, which is great. I cannot stand. Oh, everything's counterclockwise, by the way. So don't reverse thread like I almost did. Everything is opposite of what you think. We're in the upside down. Okay. Next grinder, let me. Last but not least, we have the Orphan Espresso Lido OG. This is the third or the third in their Lido series, I think. Um, maybe the fourth, I can't remember. But this one was released last year. Um, and it is a tank. Everything that Doug and Barb do is built to last a lifetime. It is all metal body. They do have silicon right here, but it's because you know, for that, for that grip, right? So you have uh, a, a drive system that is going to maintain alignment for a lifetime uh, because of how robust it is. And we'll take this apart and look at it here in a bit. And it also has, I think, probably the best and most intuitive and most repeatable uh, dialing in system you can have. So on the top here, you have uh, micron numbers. So from zero all the way up to 2000. And now what this is actually measuring, I think is what we probably need to move to when we're, when we're talking about uh, grind size, because it is the most objective we can discuss. When people talk about burr gap, you can't really quantify that unless you're using a lot of mathematical algorithms in order to uh, in order to make any type of statement on that. Because in reality, you're never going to have perfect alignment, right? So even if even if someone has great alignment down to 0.02 millimeters, you still have 0.02 millimeters. So that means one side is up a little, one side's down a little. So if you're talking about burr gap, one side's a little more, one side's a little less. You just can't really quantify that accurately. So you're kind of just making guesses when you say, yeah, it's every click is a 15 microns or whatever. What they do on this one is much more objective. They're talking about the conical burr movement going down. So it is something tangible and actually measurable. So the conical burr on the bottom side goes down. And so for every click here, it's stepped for the macro adjustments. Every click, 
you have this uh, line right here that shows you. So it's every click is 100 microns. So you go from zero to 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, all the way up to 2000. Now, then you have a fine, a micro stepless uh, adjustment ring, which is this brass bit right here. So you line up the line. There's a line here and 180 degrees on the other side, there's a line. Then you loosen up this little knob and you can move the knob finer to coarser. Starting in the center, it would be zero. So this, this line, I'm sorry. This line here lined up with the middle line here is going to be at zero. So if you move the brass, it, every click is five microns. So if you move the brass one click to, towards finer, you're five microns finer than where you were on the macro. So if you put it at 800, you go one click off the center, you're at 805, right? And you go four clicks off, you're at 820. Then if you go, uh, or I'm sorry, that's if you're on coarser. If you're going finer, you go down to 795 and you go four clicks more, you're at 780, right? Um, and then the opposite direction is the opposite mathematics. So you're able to get um, anywhere within five microns, which is absolutely stunning. Uh, and the fact that it's stepless is even more so. And then zeroing out is very simple as well. And it's gonna maintain its alignment because of how uh, robustly it's built. Now, obviously, elephant in the room is the fact that this hand grinder is an elephant. Look at this. It is so much bigger than anything else. Now, I, I imagine one of the big reasons is they wanted to offer a hand grinder that actually has a substantial amount of hopper room. So the hopper here, which this is actually a really awkward thing that I, I don't really love, you have to take this off, which fits in the side just like so, take this off to fill up your grounds. And it holds up to 50 ground, uh, grams of coffee. Um, it's very it's very odd. So I, I actually really enjoy putting my hand grinder on my scale and weighing out that way. This one, you essentially have to get a dose cup. Then you can hold it like this and dump them in. And then you have to, you know, kind of jimmy this back in, which I'm not worried about this coming off. It's hold, held in really tightly with a lot of friction and a lot of, uh, I mean, it's rubber on rubber. Um, so yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that, but it makes sense with what they're doing. I don't know really how you could get around it with their com complicated, complex system up here. Um, it, it's just such an insanely complex system on, on dialing. I, I, I love it, but this is definitely odd. I, I don't know what else you could really do um, because this whole area is needed, but maybe there's something. And then of course they have this massive tin down here. This is what, I, I wish they had like a, a second option that was for people who only really use like you know, 15 to 30 gram doses. This thing is obviously to take into account people who use 50 gram doses. Um, I'm just curious how many people out there are doing 50 gram doses on a hand grinder. Um, this grinds pretty well. It's using Etzinger um, uh, burrs. They use it in all their grinders. Uh, and I've, I've made videos about my thoughts on Etzinger. I really enjoy the burr sets uh, that come in like the Bratza Sete. I think it's great. The Etzman, I think it has good burr sets. I just didn't really enjoy the process of that tabletop hand grinder. But anyway, it has a solid burst set in here. It's, again, it's this and maybe the Kino are the most robustly built grinders on this table. They are just tanks. Like this thing, nothing's gonna happen to it. Holy cow, you could take this into battle. Like, oh my goodness, these two by your side? I mean, good grief. Like, I, I'm holding them and I'm just like, holy, I feel, I feel, I mean, I think my mustache just got thicker. Um, Anyway, so that's the Lido. It, it rate, retails around 285. Again, I got it at the wholesale price, which I can't remember what it was, maybe like 200 or 190 or something. Um, but yeah, so that is uh, the Lido. Now what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clap my hands. I'm gonna have all these burrs out and about, and we're gonna take a look at those. So watch this. I'm gonna, on the count of three, you're gonna see magic. One, two, magic. Okay, so let's take a look at the burrs. First up, we're gonna look at the norm core, but I mean, so about a 30, minute, a 30 millimeter cone uh, with a hexagonal shape, uh, hexagonal. So there's six spokes essentially is what I'm saying. So you have very simplistic design here with the, the cutters at the end. So you have a pretty fast feed rate, relatively speaking, uh, when, you, when you're looking at something like the Comandante that has more uh, flat edges um, and seven spokes, which slows down the feed rate. This, this I have found to be a pretty decent cup of coffee. It's not the cleanest. It's also not the dirtiest. It it does a decent job. It's um, 
yeah, it does okay on espresso, it does okay on filter. There's nothing special about it. It's definitely worth the price tag. I wouldn't say it's necessarily something that's really swinging outside of its, uh, its class. It might be something that could get away with charging 110, 115, but honestly, it's about a $100 grinder. Um, it does an okay job. I, I have not loved nor have I disliked the cups from it. Now, interestingly, I'm about to show you the TIN coated upgraded burr for the Option O Remy. Look at that, almost identical. So of course, the Helor 101 was definitely out before the Norm Core. I'm not gonna say, you know, I'm not gonna say much more about that other than the designs are suspiciously similar uh, between the two. Uh, the bodies are almost the same exact thing. The knobs look identical. The catch cups are identical with the exception of one's threaded, one's magnetic, and the burrs are almost identical. Now there is a little bit more of a flat edge here which that means there's a little bit wider area going on. These are a little bit more sharp, so this is gonna slow down the feed rate just a bit. I was able to distinguish a, a little bit of more cleanliness from this, especially with espresso. Um, and then that TIN coating is also going to guarantee a much longer lifespan. So honestly though, I was getting somewhat similar cups. And so honestly, if this is something you're interested in between those two, you're gonna get uh, similar-ish cups with the Norm Core, but you're gonna have a much more high-quality premium experience with the Option O. You have stepless grind sizing, uh, stepless dialing in with the Option O. You have the magnetic catch cup, and you have a top that doesn't fall off every four turns of the hand grinder. So, but again, it's a little bit over double the price of that, and the burr set is almost identical. So again, very similar. All right, so let's move on. Next up, we have the Time More Chestnut X. Now, this grinder in general has a ton of features that are patented and are original to this, like that the arm that I showed you, so like this right here, that's patented. The, um, I can't remember the other thing that was patented. Oh, the, their, their macro and micro setting, that, thing, that way uh, is patented, so where it has the, the minor dial and the major dial. So another thing they patented was this idea of spike first, cut later. So you have horizontal cuts, and then you have the, the more diagonal cuts that are typical. So as you see there, it's hexagonal. It's much bigger than the 30 millimeter cone here. All right, much, much bigger. It dwarfs it. Look at that, bang. Much bigger. It's gonna grind a little faster. It's gonna be a little bit easier to grind. Um, but honestly, even though this is kind of a novel idea, it's, orig it's original, it's unique, um, it doesn't actually give you the greatest particle distribution. It does an okay job for espresso because the amount of fines that it produces, but I've not truly enjoyed the filter coffee it's made. Now, you know, some people might enjoy it. It also, again, it, it, lo it does look really cool, but I am not a big fan of this burr set. All right. Next, we have the Kinu. M47, 47 because the burr set's 47 mils. Obviously the cone is not, it's closer to 41. Um, but what you have here, or not 41, it's closer to 31. Um, what you have here is another hexagonal. So all of them so far have been hexagonal, six spokes. So it's got a relatively fast feed rate. Um, but this one, let's wipe some of those grounds off. I've used this quite a bit. This one allows for a really smooth, uh, a smooth grinding experience because of that coating. And it, uh, it, it, in my opinion, this grinder has an incredible capability of making delicious traditional style espresso. You can also do, you know, more, more modern espressos. This, this has a great capability about it. Now, Kinu does make a brew burr. I've not actually used it, but I've heard from many people that it's not, it, it actually isn't even as good as this burr for, for brewing. This one does brewing and espresso equally well. In my, again, my friend Matt went and won the World Brewers Cup Championship using it. So. I really enjoy this burr. I think it does a fantastic job. It, uh, again, it's right now, in my opinion, out of all of these, it's my favorite for espresso, um, that and then the Orphan Espresso. I think, I'm, I think I'm enjoying the taste more so and the texture more so off of this, but the dial-in process on uh, this one is so much easier, so much more repeatable. Um, but I, I love the Kinu and its alignment out of the factory is absolutely stellar. Uh, it just, it's a fantastic grinder. I would definitely put it kind of like in the holy trinity of grinders, but that's kind of what the burr set looks like there. Next up, we have the King Grinder 6, and I'm gonna go ahead and spoil it and put the K plus right beside it. These are both 48 millimeter burrs, about four, uh, 32 millimeter cones. They're identical. And look at this. There's that Commandante burr. That's a 30 mil cone. 
look at the look at the similarities. Right? It is essentially the same burr geometry, just bigger. So these give you similar cut profiles to the Comandante. Now, there is a little difference in the collar and the height of the collar on the K plus and on the Kino. You can't, or on the King Grinder. You can't really see it, but there is a slight difference in that. This one is a little bit shorter. So I this is speculation, but that might be causing the reason why I've been able to choose the K plus as a cleaner cup in uh, blind comparisons at home. But uh, between these, even though they're identical and you might think you're getting a K plus for half, uh, half the price-ish, um, I, I still think the K plus does a lot better job. It does espresso really well. In fact, I mean, this is, this is the, for me, this is probably my preference on espresso between this and the Kinu, just because I prefer brighter shots. But the Kinu, I think objectively all around with most palettes pulls better espresso. So that's kind of the bird geometry here. They're both heptagonal. They have a slower uh, feed rate. They're more inclined to medium light roast coffees, um, $150, $300 around there. Here is the Etzinger. This one is very unique. Not really seen anything like it. It's kind of similar to the chestnut in that it has those um, those horizontal cuts, but then it also has teeth on those horizontal cuts. Um, honestly, this is my least favorite burr I've ever used from Etzinger. Um, it tends to just absolutely demolish the bean. It creates so many fines, and at first I thought it was just because I needed to season it. 10 pounds later, still just as many fines, and as I continue to use it, it's not really gotten any better. Um, it You can make you can dial in espresso very easily. It's just going to be, you know, more on that bitter traditional side. I really, uh, what I need to do, and I haven't really tried it, but I need to like pull this burr out and I assume other burrs will fit in this, but I wanted to present the grinder as is out of the box. And that's kind of my thoughts there. Comandante, again, needs no, uh, needs no introduction. It's got that dual bearing system. It has that uh, nitro blade, um, that nitro blade burr that everyone kind of knows about. And obviously, Lots of people know about. Um, yeah, it does a fantastic job. It has really nice high clarity for a hand grinder. It is consistent. Um, but, you know, it, it's one of the most annoying grinders for me personally because of the click system. I can't stand the click system. I want an external adjustment system. I want numbers. I want um, something relative that I can remember in order to go back to. Something like the King Grinder or the K Plus or the Orphan Espresso. I need something with a much more intuitive and more memorable system than this click system. I cannot stand the click system. I rarely use this because of that, because I, I want the red clicks, that's what I use, but good grief, I have to click it 60 times in order to go back to zeroed out in order to find where I'm trying to go. It's, it's, it's frustrating, though it does make really nice coffee. Next up, we have the burr set for this, uh, for this Chinese double uh, dual conical burr grinder. Now, again, hello, Harvard, yo. Very similar cuts, except it's opposite. It's opposite day here, right? So this one's slanted that way, this one's slanted that way. Of course, like I said, you have to turn the handle backwards. Top's very similar, except this one has a smaller axle hole, which is obviously fine. It's not really gonna affect much. But yeah, I mean, pretty dang identical. Now, the, the oops, that one's a Commandante. Let's put that back in front of it. This one makes really great coffee. It has that pre-breaking system inside. I wasn't able to pull the burr out. I didn't do and I guess I just didn't think about that. I'd have to learn how to do it and it's in there pretty solidly. But it's it's definitely a smaller burr set um, and I'm not sure. The geometry, it's, it's honestly, you can't really see it. So the pre-breaker there, it doesn't really have many cuts on it and that's because it's not trying to grind the coffee. It's just trying to do initial crushing so that by the time it gets to that final burr set, it's, it's essentially just having to grind small particles. So smaller coffee beans. Shut up, Google. It's just grinding up smaller particles, and that way you can have a more consistent grind distribution. It actually makes really, really nice coffee. Um, it's just kind of a pain to use because you're going that opposite direction. Loading the beans is not great. I don't really like the feel. I'm not going to lie. The look is kind of funky with that teal color, but, you know, it, it has that award-winning uh, burr, so what are you going to do? All right, and finally we have the Lido OG. We got a big old Etzinger burr on there. It's hexagonal. It is kind of ideal for like the medium roast. It can do light roast pretty well. It does dark roast pretty well. Um, but yeah, so it's got that really nice high, high, the great reputation of Etzinger from Liechtenstein behind it. So, I mean, it, it, it's, I can't really say much more than that. It's, it, 
It's Etchinger. It's one of their uh, uh, typical burr geometries. It's similar to the one in the Sete. It does a great job. And so a lot of people talk about how the Sete is incredible and it would be even more incredible if you could have it at lower RPM. It's essentially what you're having here. Um, so I really enjoy the coffees I've been getting from this. Now, just quickly, I'm gonna go over final, final thoughts. Um, to me, the best filter coffee for me is the K+. The Commandante does really well. The King Grinder does pretty good. I, I like this grinder with a dual with a dual burr system. But honestly, if I'm spending $300, I want something that's a little bit more finished. Uh, and this one, the differences between these two were so minute that I would just prefer this with how easy it is to dial in. This one's just kind of a pain. It's a pain to dial in with how it has that 36912 on the bottom. Everything's opposite. I just I, I, I don't really like that as much. I can't say in the click system on the Commandante. And again, in my taste sessions, I was always able to pick the K plus as my favorite filter. Now, the Kinu does incredible job for filter as well. Don't get me wrong. It just has a little bit more, uh, it's just a little bit more uh, pushing on the traditional side, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that is kind of a, a brief survey of my of filter. I also, uh, I should say, I do enjoy filter on here too. It just doesn't have that clarity here. This one I would say is more similar to the Kinu. These two are, are, are more similar in how they're uh, approaching filter coffees. Now for espresso, I already said that, you know, the Kinu is probably uh, my favorite as objectively as I can be when I'm taking into account everyone's palates. I really like the espresso from the Orphan Espresso and I really enjoy the espresso from a Commandante and the K Plus, the King Grinder and this one. It's, it's kind of hard because they're all so great. Great. I'm not going to lie, none of these were in my uh, favorites for any, for any, really any uh, category except for maybe ergonomics. I really enjoy the handle on this and how you can pull the burr out so easily. I enjoy the handle on this and the rubber stopper for uh, kind of using as a knocker. Um, but yeah, so for espresso, if I were to be taking one, it would, you know, this one's so robustly built, so is the Kinu, that they kind of are, are at the top. But if I'm looking for, you know, those high clarity, brighter shots, I'm looking at the K plus, I'm looking at the Commandante, I'm looking at this dual uh, burr set. Um, and all again, this one, yes, it has the same burr set as this, but there's something in it that is just not, maybe, maybe it's a, a lack of alignment because they're, they're, they're using really cheap components uh, to make it so much cheaper. I don't really know. Uh, I just know that consistently this one's just not quite up to snuff, though it is very good, don't get me wrong. Um, overall, I think the grinder that probably gives you the most at every level is, is for me, the K+. I think for a lot of people would be the OG Lido, because again, it's built like a tank. It's never gonna come out of alignment. The drive, the drive system's gonna last forever. Out of all these, I think that's probably the most robustly built, followed by the Kinu. The K Plus is done really well. The Commandante is done really well, and it will continue to have a big hold of the market, I believe. Um, though it is, it's, I think it's the most expensive grinder on the table, um, and, I, and I don't necessarily think it wins in any single category, right? Ergonomically, I don't think it wins. Filter, I don't think it wins. Espresso, I don't think it wins. But it does everything really well. There's a massive community behind it. People talk in terms of clicks. So, that is something kind of like when you're driving cars, there are people who could buy Jeep Wranglers to be a part of that community, right? There's a similar thing going on with the Commandante C40. Um, anyway, that is my exhaustive thoughts on these hand grinders. If I miss anything, let me know in the comments below. If you watch this whole video, wow, you are, say I'm insane, like that you're insane because you are insane if you watched it all. You are, you're insane. Um, anyway, um, thanks again for watching. Support the Patreon if you wanna you know, have a chance at getting some of these grinders or if you wanna help me uh, get more things so I can be more objective in my presentations. You know, hit the like, hit the subscribe, do all that, that silly stuff in order to help the channel go forward. We're marching towards 100K. Um, so thank you for all the support. It's been really fantastic. Um, I hope you enjoyed the work I put into this video. Uh, sorry for how long it was, but you know, I want to be thorough when it, it deals with your money. So make informed decisions, enjoy your coffee, brew something tasty today, and cheers.